Became my prison. Love was waiting with the key. My story was my failure. Now my story is redeemed.
if you are still out in the courtyard getting coffee, this is your sign to come on in. We're going to start church. If this is your first Sunday, let us be the first to just say good morning and welcome to Hillside. Uh, we are so excited that you have joined us today. Go ahead and fill out one of those orange cards in the seat back in front of you. Take it to our welcome center. We have a free gift for you today. Uh, but let's go ahead and put our hands together and let's worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this morning. Come on.
around. 
I know many of us in the room need something today and no doubt this week you've been pushing on that thing trying to make it happen and uh, I know on Friday morning of this week I went and prayed with one of the ladies in our church she uh, her bowels intestines were all knotted up bowel obstruction she was suffering big time for about four days and they were going to do surgery Friday afternoon and we prayed together and Hallelujah, God has set her free. They didn't do surgery. Uh, the intestines loosened up because of some scar tissue in the past. And you know, you can work on something all week. The doctors were working on it. And I'm thank, thank God for doctors. They were working on it all week. And uh, I'm sure some of what they were doing was helping. But I am thankful this song talks about a God who comes into the room. And whether it's this room or whether it's your home or your business but God comes into the room and what you couldn't do on your own he does for you hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Lord I've got something today I've got something today that I need to bring before the Lord don't worry about that God's in the room and so maybe the lights maybe the lights just uh, we'll figure it out uh, I know I've got something today that I've been trying to move forward. I've been trying to move forward. And I want to, again, bring it to the Lord who's in the room and say, God, without you, I'm not enough. I'm not enough. If, if, you, would, if you would feel comfortable, uh, just lift your hands and surrender. I'm going to surrender my thing, my personal, uh, you, you, yours. Father in heaven, you see us in this room today. Lord, we're lifting our hands to you because we are surrendering we are working on something at work, maybe a health issue, maybe a family thing, one of our children, a mom or a dad. Lord, we're working on something and it's just, it's just not happening. And so God, we're calling on your name today. Jesus, 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 you are worthy to be praised. We lift our hands and surrender and we ask you today, specifically ask him for that thing today. Lord, answer the prayers and the cries of your people today. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Victory and praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You can grab a seat today. Thank you, Jesus. Man, I love that song because uh, every week I work hard. And, uh, and I know you do too. And and then there's just some things that just stall out and I can't, can't get moving. And, uh, and uh, that just, that song gives me such comfort and encouragement that, you know what, when I'm not enough, man, he, he comes in. Uh, you know, I just can't get it out of my mind. I've, I, I raised my hands for something else, a little more serious. But man, I, I have a car. I've tried to get smog twice this week. And I just can't get it to pass smog. And, uh, you know, I just, can, can I put that practical thing before you today, Lord? I mean, just, I just need to smog this car. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's just a silly thing on the side. But I just, I just couldn't get it out of my head. Maybe, maybe you just need something silly like that, uh, like a car smogged or something. I hope God does a miracle and, and you come back dancing next week because whatever was locked up is loosed because of who he is. So praise the Lord for who he is. Uh, I want to thank you for your uh, giving to Hillside. Um, God has done a great thing the last few weeks. Uh, you know, usually giving is up and down uh, in a church because of payroll cycles and you know, uh, uh, you know, people living on retirement or uh, uh, teachers living on once a month, you know, they get paid teachers. And so it, you know, but for the last three weeks, our tithes and offerings have been above the minimum budget for the last three weeks. So it, it really is a miracle. And, uh, 
And also, last Sunday's offering, we had a great members meeting, and so I don't know if that's what it was or God just did a miracle. I, last week's, our, our budget every week is $21,000. So you can know that as our church. It's our church, not my church. So it's $21,000 a week. And last week's offering was $40,000. You're crazy. Uh, part of that was somebody sold a piece of land and they tithed on, a, it was just a, a portion of it. So they tithed $10,000 on that land uh, sale. And so praise the Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may wonder what that's going for. Well, last Sunday we had six people come forward for salvation. So we're pretty excited about that. Six people came forward for salvation. Uh, we had an outstanding Remain Youth Service this last Wednesday night where Caleb and Caden told me about some kids coming forward and surrendering their lives to Jesus. So we, we get excited about that. Um, we had 113 at the Bible Club on... 118, I can't get the number right. I said 130 first service. Now I underestimated 113. We had a lot of kids at, at Redwood Middle School Bible Study and we're excited about that. So praise the Lord for what he's doing in, uh, in our church and in the community around us what God is doing, rescuing people. And I'm seeing a lot of visitors today. So welcome, a lot of people, old friends too, coming back. Yeah, let's celebrate new people in the house. Good to see you today. <clears throat> Let me remind you real quick, some ways to give. I think they're on the screen behind me. Uh, there's some boxes as you leave, little black boxes by the door. You can drop check or cash in there. We appreciate that. Also online giving, easy way to give um, through the website or we have a, a Hillside app, you can give through the app. And then uh, I'll, I'll welcome the online community. Uh, you can give through the website or the app. Uh, and, and thank you for your giving. I know that you're participating as well and you're making all this happen. Um, by the way, we have 100 users on average, 100 users, I don't know how many people that represents. This is the new world we live in. So um, it, it could be 100,000, who knows? But 100 users, uh, so that's you. Are, are logging on every week and watching live. So they're not like scrolling the internet and looking, but like every Sunday during our services, worshiping with us, a hundred users are online. Yeah, praise the Lord. That's super cool. So, um, you know, we'll just, we'll just assume we're reaching a million people and that'll be exciting. Um, let me pray for you uh, just for our offering time and then we'll, we'll open up the word of God today. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your blessings. Thank you for your provision. Thank you, God, for what you're doing in our valley. Thank you, Lord, for the cities uh, that are represented in our valley uh, and, and beyond that are being impacted by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord, blessing over the households today, uh, not just financially, but Lord, absolutely, as they give, Lord, I want them to be a conduit of blessing. So just pour it out as fast as they give it in the name of Jesus. But also, Lord, in health, in abundance. The Bible talks about you guarding our going out and our coming in. And so I just pray over them that you would guard their going out and their coming in. Everything in their possession, Lord, would be, would be blessed by you. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We're in Daniel chapter eight today. If you have a Bible, there's also some notes in the app. You'll be on the screen behind me. Uh, Daniel chapter eight. <clears throat> Before we get there, uh, let me just recognize that it's Palm Sunday and what that means. Yeah, all right, celebrate that. Yeah, it's Palm Sunday. I mean, yeah, just clap through the whole thing. If I say something really wonderful, please clap too because that'll make me feel good. Uh, so Palm Sunday, it's the, the day that Jesus entered Jerusalem, you know, five days before his death, a week before his resurrection. Triumphal entry is what it's called in your Bible in that section of uh, the, the Gospels. And I'm just giving you a warning. In about 15 minutes, you're going to hear shrills and screams from probably 30 children because they are going to reenact. Pastor Stacy loves this every year, and it's Pastor Stacy's greatest joy and her volunteer team, such a wonderful volunteer team. It's their greatest joy every year to interrupt our service <laughs> with screams and shrills. And so don't be concerned. Your children are not being kidnapped or, you know. Uh, being harmed, it, they, are, they are celebrating this donkey will bring in Jesus and probably 10 kids will get to be Jesus and 10 kids, you know, it, it's just the whole thing. So you have to join the kids ministry team if you wanna see it. That's just, you know, you gotta volunteer. So, uh, so it's gonna disrupt us, but we'll charge ahead. It'll be great. God's kingdom um, is here, amen. Um, one more thing to clear up. 
uh, before I get into the message today. Uh, about four weeks ago, we had a wonderful illustration uh, involving three goldfish. And uh, it's just, you, know, you guys are just laughing before. Uh, might as well show the picture. There they are. They're alive and well today, surviving, thriving. Uh, Gianna, uh, Gianna came, uh, I think she's 14. She came after the service and she said, what are you gonna do with the goldfish? And I said, I was praying for a person like you. Uh, you know, and I, I made her check with her parents, you know, because the last thing you want the kids to do is bring home goldfish and their parents now hate you, you know. <laughs> I don't like to be hated as a pastor. And so uh, there they are, they're happy. I mean, they're, they're on vacation, in fact. So uh, anyway, I thought, I thought you would enjoy. It, it was a little traumatizing, the illustration, so I thought you would enjoy um, seeing them alive and well today. Daniel chapter eight. The title of my message today is Enduring to the End. Enduring to the end. If you've been with us on this journey, you know that Daniel in the Old Testament of our Bibles, Daniel is an amazing character. He's an individual that endures to the end. And we're starting. I, I warned you. I warned you. So <clears throat> the first time it happened to me, it was traumatic. She didn't tell me. And it's about 15 years ago. And I thought we were being, you know, attacked or something. So. Um, we're beginning to be given insight into what allowed Daniel to really live above the storm, to live above the, the change of power and government. What, what, what allowed Daniel to just be this amazing character? And if, if you were here last week, then you marked with us a pretty significant shift in the Bible uh, with Daniel 6 and Daniel chapter 7. Pastor Tyler did a great job. You should go watch that. It's online if you haven't seen it. Uh, it's on our app. You can check it out. <clears throat> we transitioned from narrative. The first six chapters were, were a storytelling in the life of Daniel. <clears throat> and now we're moving to chapters 7, 8, and till 12. The second half of the book is what's called apocalyptic literature. And uh, apocalyptic literature is filled with images and symbols and meanings that we don't understand because some of it hints at the future. And, and it's just, it can kind of disturb you. In fact, I think four or five times it even says in these seven chapters, I, Daniel, what, what was disturbed. I couldn't sleep. I was sick to my stomach because that's apocalyptic literature and um, also apocalyptic movies that you probably shouldn't watch. Uh, so I love what Pastor Tyler said last week about this literature. He, he defined it for us as literature that, that unveils and reveals. And, and again, this is the secret to Daniel's life, is that he was friends with God, as you can be a friend of God today, and God showed him things, helped him understand, and give him perspective on what was happening in the world around him. And so he was able to endure to the end. Now, some dreams are super disturbing, and uh, I've been encouraged before. I'm sure you've received the encouragement as well, that when you have a disturbing dream or a dream with a lot of symbols and imagery, you know, to write it down right away, because, you know, you'll wake up at two o'clock in the morning and you'll be like, oh, I got to remember that when I wake up. Have you ever done this? And then you wake up at seven o'clock and all of a sudden you're like, what was that I was dreaming about? And you should have written it down. Well, I'm thankful that Daniel wrote some of these things down, but they're weird. <laughs> now, I did have a dream this week that woke me up at two o'clock. Some of you know Nathan and Brittany, my oldest son and daughter-in-law moved back and they brought little Philip with him, my precious little grandson. And so we're just having the time of our lives. On Tuesday though, at about two o'clock in the morning, I woke up and I had a dream that Angela birthed twins. <laughs> I didn't write it down. I went back as quickly to sleep as I could, hoping that I would forget and, and wake up and it wouldn't be a dream. Thank God it wasn't it was a dream and, and, and all is good in the Daniel house. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> but dreams can really disturb us, can really trouble us, can really throw us off course. And uh, today we're gonna just pick into another dream here of Daniel. Um, <clears throat> but I just think it's gonna be really helpful as we look at it today. I'm gonna read the <clears throat> interpretation of the dream. Uh, <laughs> kids, so much joy, <clears throat> so much joy. Um, this dream has in it a goat and a ram 
And again, like last week, it's a similar dream to last week. It's got lots of horns. It has a, bo a, a bold faced king in the future that's talked about who blasphemes God and comes against God Almighty. There's all this imagery. I, I wanna read you the in interpretation part um, and because uh, I think that'll just give us help here on understanding uh, how to endure to the end. So I'm gonna pick up at verse 18. You'll have to go home and read the, read the fun part, the bad dream. Okay, I'm gonna read the interpretation. Let me put this in context a little bit. <clears throat> uh, Daniel has this dream, a probably you know, 4, 450 BC. So 450 BC, somewhere in there. And he has this dream while the king of Mede and Persia is in power. That's important because this dream gives evidence that there's a real God in the universe who can declare the future. And if you were, if you were a doubter today of, of God's existence, this is part of the evidence that God exists. This is written a couple hundred years before it happens. So it's pretty, pretty significant. Verse 18, and when he had spoken to me, this is an angelic being speaking to Daniel, I fell into a deep sleep with my face to the ground, but he touched me and made me stand up. He said to me, behold, I will make known to you what shall be at the latter end of the indignation. Uh, and for it, ref for it refers to an appointed time of the end. I mean, there's all this weird language. It's like, what is he even talking about? Listen to this, verse 20. <clears throat> As for the ram that you saw with the two horns, that's the kings of Mede and Persia. That's current life for him. That's what he's living in right now. And the goat <clears throat> is the king of Greece. Now, we know from history that this is going to be Alexander the Great. You know your history, right? Comes and wipes out the Medes and the Persians. The great horn between his eyes is the first king. Daniel, this is a couple decades before this happens. <clears throat> As the horn that was broken in your dream, in the place of it are four others, four other kingdoms arise. Those are the four sons of Alexander the Great. We know that from history but Daniel doesn't know that. It's just incredible. And at the latter end of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their limit, a king of bold face, one who understands riddles, shall arise. His power shall be great, uh, but not by his own power. And he shall cause fearful destruction and shall succeed in what he does and destroy mighty men. I mean, this is bad guys. And the people who are saints, uh, by his cunning, he shall make their de deceit prosper under his hand. And in his own mind, he shall become great. Without warning, he shall destroy many. He shall even rise up against the prince of princes. That's speaking of God himself. And he shall be broken, but by, uh, but by no human hand. The last verse of our chapter. And I, Daniel, was overcome and lay sick for many days. Then I arose and went about the king's business, but I was appalled by the vision and did not understand it. I, Daniel, was overcome and lay sick for some days. Then I arose and went about the king's business, for I was appalled by the vision and did and did not understand it. The secret to Daniel's life is that he just went back to work. I know it's not like earth shattering. He just was faithful. He just persevered. He just endured. I love this verse. Like he, the political situation was so bad. Maybe you feel like that today. We're in an election year for president. Maybe you feel like it. I am sick to my stomach. Well, guess what? According to this, you can call in for a couple of sick days and then you just got to get back to work because the king of kings and the Lord of lords is still on the throne. 
So Daniel just gets back to work. I just love this verse. I just love this verse. Now, let me push it a little further. Daniel knows from his dream that who he's working for is not going to be in power tomorrow. But he works for him anyway. Would you work for your company tomorrow if you knew they weren't going to exist Tuesday? Would you work for your neighbor if you knew they were going to move the next day? I'm never going to see this person again. They don't need my help. They can move themselves. Right? No, not Daniel. Not Daniel. He, he's so sick, he takes a couple of sick days. I mean, I'll give you a couple of sick days. God will give you a couple of sick days. But at some point, you got to get back to work and serve the king who God has put you in connection with. I just love this endurance of Daniel's life. At some level, I, and I think it even says it here, the last few words is he did not understand it. I don't think Daniel totally understood it. Daniel is in the position Daniel is in simply because Daniel was faithful to do what God asked him to do that day. And what he did that day, his faithfulness that day, his endurance on that day provided for him the opportunity for the next day. And all of a sudden he found himself second in command of the kingdom because he just did the day before what God had asked him to do. It's just an incredible testimony of endurance, of not giving up. Daniel chapter seven from last week, Pastor Tyler read this to us. As I looked, Daniel says, this horn, this, this king, made war with the saints and prevailed over them. I feel like that in America sometimes. I feel like there's an agenda making war against the things of God, and sometimes I feel like they're winning. And that's what this says. So it was true for Daniel, it's been true for all history, and it's true today, and the saints and prevailed over them until. Now there's a few words in the Bible you have to love. And intel is one of them. Um, Paul, the apostle to the Ephesians, says it this way, but God. Intel, the ancient of days, came. You see, endurance is fueled by the reality that I know someday, no matter what's happening around me, I know someday the king of kings, ancient of days, God Almighty is going to take his throne. And when that day happens, I'm gonna be standing on that side of the equation. That's endurance. That's Daniel. That's how simple it was. Everything else is going on around him. Things are not the way they should be. He's grieved. He's sick to his stomach. He doesn't wanna go to work for this king, but he does anyway because he knows that it's, at some point, the ancient of days is gonna take his throne and judgment was given for the saints of the most high, this verse says, and the time came when the saints possessed the kingdom. Hillside, that day will come. Let's endure to the end, amen. <laughs> Daniel chapter 12, last, last verse of the, the book. We're not there yet, but I'm gonna read it to you today. Blessed is he who waits and arrives at the 1,335th day. I, I, that's, there's a lot there. We'll look at it later. But just listen to this verse. But go your way till the end. Do what God has called you to do. You be faithful to your family. You live righteousness. You say no to ungodliness. You keep your eyes focused on him, the author and finisher of your faith, not on the garbage that surrounds you in this world. You talk different than the people around you. Go your way till the end. You go God's way till the end, this says, and you shall rest and shall stand in the allotted place. What do you think this reference is? This reference is what Jesus said in John 14. Behold, I go away to prepare a place for you. If it weren't true, I would tell you, but I'm going to prepare a place because I'm gonna come and get you to be where I am. Amen. There is an allotted place for me. There's an allotted place for you. There was an allotted place for Daniel. Endure to the end. 
Albert Einstein said, I'm not that smart. I just stay with problems longer. I don't know if I buy that. I've seen his IQ score, and I'm imagining mine. But I like the statement nonetheless. I don't know if Daniel was the most gifted individual. It may just be that Daniel stayed in the game longer. And as a result of daily decision to serve the king, God lifted him to a place that transformed his culture. A greater Jew than Albert Einstein, Jesus, he said it this way, the one who endures to the end will be saved. Hallelujah. You may be curious who this bold-faced king is. Remember, this prophecy is written like 450, 480 BC, somewhere in there. <clears throat> and this bold-faced king we actually now know in history, and there's probably a future bold-faced king that we've yet to see. Prophecy often has double meanings, triple meanings, you know, just kind of future significance. But we at least know one bold-faced king was uh, Ar Artisicus the fourth. <clears throat> he was one of Alexander the Great's uh, grandchildren. And he uh, busts into Jerusalem and uh, he sacrifices a pig on the holy altar to the Greek god Zeus. Now, you probably know that pork is, uh, you know, not a kosher animal, very offensive to the Jewish people. He sacrifices to a false god. Um, out of this comes the Maccabean revolt. Uh, so remember, he will prevail against the saints of God for a time until the Ancient of Days comes. So all this is happening. This is in 160 B.C., so about 250 years later, what Daniel saw is happening. This is the current celebration of Hanukkah in the Jewish calendar. So like, if you ever doubted there was a God, like, here it is, man. He's, he's kind of showing Daniel what's happening and what's gonna come. The Maccabean revolt kicks the, Assyrian, the Syrians out of Jerusalem. They recapture, which all of this sets up for the coming of Jesus Christ, which we celebrate this week, his death and resurrection. Incredible. <laughs> blessed is the man, blessed is the woman who remains steadfast under trial. James chapter one. Blessed is the man, blessed is the woman who remains steadfast <clears throat> under trial. When they're sick to their stomach, about what's happening in the world around them, they just get back to God's business. For when that person, James says, has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. I'm convinced that Daniel just simply loved God. He just knew God, he loved God. In fact, in Daniel chapter 11, it says those who know their God will be strong and do mighty deeds. It is because of the knowledge of God that Daniel had and that is available to every single one of us in the room today, every single one of us watching online. God wants you to know him. The ancient of days wants you to know him. God Almighty wants you to know him. And he wants to give you the revelation to live a trans forming, powerful, dynamic, life-giving life right now, today. If you were to ask me, how do I endure? How do I, how do I become a person who endures? I'm gonna give you the secret right now. Ready for the secret? How do I endure? Let me take a drink of water. Thank you. you, you some of you remember Pastor Tyler telling you to clap and... <clears throat> two things really quick. Number one, one day at a time. <clears throat> one day at a time. <clears throat> it's the same thing they tell an alcoholic in AA. There's no brilliance to the technique. It's just you decide today not to drink alcohol. All my friends know that, that are, that are sober in here, that they've had a past of alcoholism. You know the AA strategy. It's just today. I'm just not gonna drink today. Well, what about, what about at your, your son's birthday party when he turns 21? 
I'm just, I'm not gonna drink today. I, I don't, I'll, oh, when that day comes, I'll decide that day. It is one day at a time. You just get up and you do the day. Celebrate recovery, same thing. Christian version of AA, so beautiful. Just today, just today. And Daniel models this to us. In Daniel chapter one, I'll take you back to chapter one. In Daniel chapter one, uh, the eunuch wants Daniel to eat and his friends want him to eat food, sacrificed to idols, the king's food. And Daniel says, hey man, that food is not holy. Uh, we, wanna, we wanna eat food that hasn't been sacrificed to idols and that we have a certain menu. And Daniel doesn't say, you know, we wanna do this for the rest of our lives. Daniel says, uh, just give me 10 days. Just give me 10 days. It, just give me, I just, wanna, I just wanna show you what God can do. You see, you don't need to show me what God can do for a lifetime. You don't need to show me what God can do next week. You just need to show me what God can do today. Yeah. And if you would walk a life of holiness today, Wow, what kind of effect would that have on your family, on your neighborhood, on your school, high school friends? And you walk on that campus, now you're off for a week so you can think about this, but you know, next, next week when you walk on your high school campus and you live a day of holiness, just one day, you will do more damage than you would do in a lifetime of floundering. Just one day. And Daniel does these 10 days and while everyone else is eating ice cream and having surf and turf and, you know, all the things, the king's wine and all the stuff. And Daniel and his, Daniel and his friends are eating, you know, a Brussels sprouts. And not like the kind they do in Napa, you know, when you go to these nice restaurants and they, they deep fry them and they're with bacon and you're like, I didn't know I liked Brussels sprouts. Actually, you like bacon. <laughs> it's like they've tricked you, you know, it's like, I like you come home, you tell your mom, I like Brussels sprouts. You know, your mom's like, you never like Brussels sprouts when I was a kid. You like bacon, actually, is what you like. And, and Daniel and his friends are just making a decision for today. Not for tomorrow, not next year, today. If you wanna be a person who endures till the end, you need to make a decision today. Before you leave this room, I'm gonna be this kind of person. I'm gonna be the kind of person that tunes in, listens to, follows God. I'm gonna get into the Bible. I'm gonna understand what God has said and spoken. I'm gonna get around some Christian friends. I'm not gonna surround myself. You, you, you can't surround yourself with people in the world and expect to endure to the end. You can't have people nipping at you all day for your holiness and your morality and your decision to live God's way and expect to endure to the end. Now, you're gonna get around some people once in a while that nip at your heels, but you better get powered up and fueled up and have a decision made about who you're gonna be. Which probably brings me to my, my second idea here from Daniel's life, and that is to start with your current capacity. You see, Often we despise small beginnings. But see, actually, God honors small beginnings throughout Scripture. It, it, it's, it's never about, you know, it's never about the, the, grand, the grand plan or thing. Or, it's about what you have in your hand. It's always, Moses, what do you have in your hand? Uh, the little boy with the lunch, Jesus says, what do you have there? Oh, a couple of fish? Yeah, I can feed 5,000 with a couple of fish, no problem. It's always about what you have. It's always about your current capacity. We all want to change the world. And we all also feel like we, ha we don't have the ability to change the world. So then we end up doing nothing. When actually, if you're just a person of perseverance for every day and put in the Lord's hands what you have every day, and make every day about him and his agenda and his plan for your life and his purpose, just like Daniel, you will find yourself in promotion and in the opportunities to change the culture around you. You see, we learned last, uh, whatever, three weeks ago, you were, many of you were with me. We, we were with Daniel in the lion's den. You remember being with Daniel in the lion's den? <clears throat> I have news for you. Daniel was not in the lion's den. 
because of his protest. He was in the lion's den because of his practice. I'll say that again. I, I, uh, I worked on that all week. Uh, <clears throat> Daniel was in the lion's den not for his protest, but for his practice. Yeah, thank you. That, was, that felt better. That felt better. We lean toward protest. We're Americans. We have rights. But we don't see that in Daniel. This edict is made not to pray to the God of heaven, not to pray to any other God but the king, and Daniel doesn't protest. He's second in command of the kingdom. He doesn't write a petition. He, he, at least from scripture, he doesn't say anything public. Instead, he just does his practice. He doesn't shout from his balcony, look everyone, I'm praying to God. No, he goes into his room and the window's open like it always is. He kneels like he always does and he cries out to God. And I'm guessing, uh, you know, not super bold, but just, you know, out loud. And he, he's just praying. He's just, now listen, in his practice, he gets thrown in the lion's den. God saves him. And as a result of his practice, he changes the world around him. Why? Here it is. You got to write this one down. Because his practice becomes his protest. Try that on for size. His, his practice, you got to think, think about it. This is like, like attacking American Christianity. His practice becomes his protest. You see, the problem for us in America specifically, is that being a Christian doesn't look much different than being a non-Christian. I'm reading a book right now and the pornography rate, people looking and trapped in pornography is the same inside the church as outside the church. The uh, bankruptcy rate, same inside the church as outside the church. Choices about morality, unfaithfulness in marriage. Maybe you've even been hurt and wounded by that. Divorce, rebellious children, disrespectful. I, I mean, on and on, lifestyle, places we go, things we watch, things we talk about. Shows, I'm watching a new one. Oh, I am too, which one is it? And your non-Christian friend's like, what? really, you watch that? I thought you went to that church. You see, in reality, it's our practice that's the problem, not our protest. Daniel was a man of practice. And God used his practice to change a nation. Just today. Just today. I was watching a show. I hadn't planned on saying this, but I was watching a show and it just had a lot of cussing in it and a lot of just, you know, I, I, see, see how terrible I am? Uh, and, and we were fasting. Do you remember when we were fasting in January? And I told a couple people, I said, you gotta watch what you put in your body, what in your mind. And every time the Holy Spirit was like, oh yeah, buddy, you're watching that show. And I was in, I mean, I, you know, when you're in like four seasons, right? You're, you're in it, you know? And uh and I, and, I, and I remember saying, I'm just not gonna watch it today. I'm just not gonna watch it today. I'm just not gonna watch it today. Now it's been three months and I haven't watched it. It's our practice. It's our daily decision. If you wanna know the secret sauce of Daniel's life, how he endured to the end, how he had an influence and an impact on the people around him. It was because, like in the Lion's Den story, the, the people that were ruling his coworkers, his coworkers said to him, we can't find anything on this guy. He, he doesn't talk like we talk. He doesn't manage his affairs like we manage our affairs. 
Man, he is squeaky clean. You see, his practice was his protest. What would that be like for you as a high school student? Just your lifestyle. People around you are like, I don't know. I'm not comfortable talking about that around him. That's a compliment. I know it's like, I want friends. But when they see that difference, that's your protest. You join in that conversation, you're not making a protest and you're not enduring, you're floundering. You're not having power in that moment. You're being robbed of your power at work when they say, man, that guy's trustworthy and he's honest and don't give him that project because he won't fudge the numbers, right? You're standing out for God. Now, the Bible says, that the enemy will prevail for a time. I want you to be ready for persecution. God's people have always been persecuted. God's people have always been persecuted in every generation. And guess what? The church still grows and grows and grows. God's kingdom is like leaven and bread. You can't get rid of it. Once it's in there, you can't get rid of it. And where you work, where you live, where you go to school, you are leaven. Where Daniel, Daniel, let's put this in perspective. Daniel was not doing his dream job. He, He probably wanted to be a school teacher or a plumber or something. And he got kidnapped. He got, he, 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 went, he went into a mind indoctrination program. They tried to change his name. They changed his identity. They did all this stuff. They made him dressed. They changed everything about him. And now he finds himself as a politician. He was not doing what he wanted to do. But he was doing what God called him to do. And every day he went to work. Every day, he said, God, what I have in my hand, I give to you. Use it, Lord. Use it, Lord. We have a conference on faith and work. You'll see it on our app coming up in April. That's why we're doing this conference. Because we believe that God has a plan for your life where you work and where you live and where you go to school. If you're a teenager, if you're a college student and you're going to school, that's your work. And God has called you there. And you may be sick with what's going on in your high school. You may be sick with what's happening at college. And I'll give you a couple of sick days. Apparently God will give you a couple of sick days. But you've got to get back to work. And you've got to live for him. And you've got to proclaim who he is. And not as a protest, as a practice. You've got to abandon the the things you're looking at. You've got to say no to the, the vices and the temptations. And you've got to set your eyes on the author and finisher of your faith and shine for him. Now, the reality is Daniel and his friends changed every king they worked for. They changed the heart of every king they worked for. And we also have record that every king they influenced, reverted back to their old ways. Talk about discouragement. Just when you think you're getting it done, you have setbacks. But what does Daniel do? He endures to the end because he knows there's an allotted place for him in the kingdom of God. Can we celebrate that? We have a place in heaven this morning that is ours. I'm gonna have the worship team sing a song over you. We're gonna take communion in a few moments where we celebrate the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And I want you to sit there. They'll invite you to worship with them but I want you to sit there and I want you to hear the words of this song because no doubt, like me, you've not always persevered. Sometimes we've broken covenant with God. Sometimes we've made mistakes. 
Sometimes we failed. We've said the wrong thing. We hung out with the wrong people. We got tripped up and trapped in something that we shouldn't have. We, we fall. We fall. We fall. But this song is about the Son of Man who rescues us. And I just want to remind you of this today. In Matthew's Gospel, it says this, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom, a ransom, guys, for many. We're going to sing a song, and it's about the blood of Jesus. And that can be a little weird. Like, wow, we're singing about blood today? What, what is happening here? We're singing about the life of Jesus. There's, there's, right, there's life in the blood. We, we know that. You, if, a, if something's living, it's got blood. That, that's, the, that's the purpose. That's the reason. And, and the reality is, is someone has given his life for you. For all your mess-ups, for all my mess-ups, for all my failures, for all the times I didn't endure, for all the times I, I protested instead of practiced, for all the times I lost integrity. The Son of Man speaks of Jesus Christ. He gave his life as a ransom for me and you. Now, interesting, I picked that verse because that is fulfillment. 450 years earlier, Daniel, okay, Daniel chapter 7. In my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man. So a divine being, but he had human form. He was like the son of man. It's the incarnation. It's Philippians chapter 2. It's just awesome. I saw someone like the son of man coming with the clouds of heaven, and he approached the ancient of days. This is the beginning of the Trinity, right? God the Father, ancient of days, Son of God, right? Son of man, coming, and was led into his presence. Some translations say, was presented to him because it's sacrificial. So he's coming on the clouds of heaven. He's being presented. The Son of man gives his life as a ransom for you and me and for the world. And, and he was given authority, glory, sovereign power over all peoples, nations, and every... Oh, you don't have this scripture. Let me slow down. Okay. The Son of Man was given authority, glory, sovereign power over all peoples, nations, and men of every language worshipped him. This is Philippians chapter 2, fulfillment in the New Testament. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. His kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's worship with this song. Let him sing it over you. This is Christ Jesus, his work for you on the cross. Hallelujah. Into 
close your eyes for a couple of moments. I just want to make, make room for a point of decision. If you need to make a decision today about following Jesus Christ. We read it last Sunday in our study of Daniel. And I want to read it again today. It says Daniel chapter 12 here. It says, And many of those who fell, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth. So many of those who have died shall awake. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Just with your eyes closed, there's two sides to this equation. And before we take communion today, I want to make sure you're on the right side. Because we're all going to fall asleep, die, and we're all going to awake. And, and there's an awaking to everlasting life, taking your allotted place with the Ancient of Days. And then there's this place of shame and everlasting contempt. But that, that doesn't need to be your future today. And if the house lights could come up just a little bit so I can see a little better. Today, if you want to make a decision to be certain about everlasting life, just raise your hand so I can pray with you. Yeah, yeah, several, yeah. Keep your hand up, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just surveying. Praise the Lord over here on this side. Thank you, Jesus. Just keep your hand up for a minute. Hallelujah. Anyone else? In the middle, yeah. It was like 15 or something, 18 people. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Man, every day, every day I make that decision. God, I'm yours. Jesus, come into my life. I want to live for you. Close your eyes real quick. Father in heaven, we just pray right now those that lifted their hands. Let's all just repeat after me. Father God, thank you for Jesus. I give my life to you. I ask Jesus that you would forgive me of my sins. I want to walk with you. I want to follow you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want us to take communion together, but uh, we'll have some folks up here by this table in the corner. I already got a few guys over here standing. We'll have another prayer team over here. If you raised your hand today, I want you to come forward. It's not just believing in your heart, but it's also confessing with your mouth. So please come, pray with us. We've got a Bible we want to give you, other materials, if that would be helpful. Uh, but right now, if you could, in the chair rack in front of you, there's a little cracker and juice. I want to lead you in communion today. Remembering Jesus Christ. We hold this bread. It's a little clear cellophane there on the top. We hold the bread today. Thank you, Jesus. We're able to stand here today, not because of our own merit, but because of Jesus. He gave his life as a ransom for you and me. Thank you, Lord. Let's take the bread together and remember our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was gathered with his disciples on the night before he was betrayed and hung on a cross, died for our sin. He said, do this in remembrance of me. And then after leading them and taking of bread to symbolize his body, he took a cup of juice and symbolizing his blood and he said I'm not going to drink of this until I drink it with you again in the kingdom of God he's going to come back the ancient of days will take his throne and the son of man will be given ultimate power and dominion and authority and you and I as followers of Jesus will take our allotted place and I know the world we live in today sometimes makes us sick but can we agree together to be the kind of Christian that gets back to work and be the best teachers and plumbers and students and uh, doctors and pastors and husbands and wives and 
children that this world has ever seen because of Jesus. Let's drink this together. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And right now, if you raised your hand before Charlotte comes, Charlotte's going to come up and dismiss you. But if you raised your hand, can you just move right now? We want to celebrate you. Just come on up and pray with these. If you raised your hand today, come on right out. Yep, they're coming up front here. There's several over here. Just come right over here. Pastor Pat's over here. We've got Tyler, Sam, some of our board members. The guy coming from the back. Come on up, sir. Yep. Anyone else? Charlotte, come on and dismiss us today. Thank you so much. Keep coming. Yep. Let's applaud them. Keep coming. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks. Yeah, church. There is nothing greater to celebrate. There is nothing greater to celebrate than people joining the kingdom. And so uh, we will go forth in celebration today from this service. I do just have a few little announcements to share with you as you head out. Uh, first of all, I want to draw your attention to our app. We have an app here at Hillside, and this is the hub of all the important information that you could possibly need to know. This is where you can find past sermons, sermon notes, event information, event registration. You can give on the app. We want you to download that. There is information behind me on the screen. Uh, this will be kind of how we keep you in the loop here at Hillside. Uh, and one other important thing on the app that we have is what's called a Connect card. So if it is your first Sunday here, we want to say a huge welcome. We're so glad that you are here in person or online. What we want you to do is fill out one of those Connect cards. And if it is too much to figure out an app right now, uh, we want you to grab one of the red cards in the seat pocket behind you or in front of you. Uh, and that is what you'll fill out. And we want you to take that up to the welcome booth up there. They will welcome you and they will give you a little gift. Uh, and the last thing, friends, is that it is Easter next week. Easter! This is such a big week here in the church. And so we have a couple big events coming up. So on Friday night at 6.30, we have our Good Friday service. We want to see you there. And then on Sunday at 8.45 and 10.30, our normal service times, we also have our Easter services. And we don't want to just see you. We want to see your friends too. And so I encourage you guys to all invite people. If everybody here invites one person, we will double in size. Can you imagine, church, how incredible that would be? We want to share the gospel with people. And so invite, invite, invite this week. Let's join together outside in community and chat with one another and get to know one, one another as the body of the church. That is all we have for you this morning. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Have a great week, Hillside.